Right everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, hopefully you've been enjoying all my recent uploads. Hopefully you've been enjoying the videos. I've been trying to up the standard a little bit in terms of editing, making it look a little bit nicer, and making it a little bit more easy for you guys to watch. Today, obviously we're talking about A-levels, and we're gonna be talking about what A-levels you need to take for medicine. And it's an interesting topic because a lot of people talk about what A-levels you need. Personally, I don't think it's a big factor. There are a few things that you have to do, obviously, but I think um, it should be a useful video in terms of helping you guys decide what you wanna do and what you should be doing for medicine. And before we get into the video guys, make sure you try and hit the subscribe button. We are on around 172 subscribers, which is great news. Um, I actually want to hit 200 subscribers by the end of March. It's looking a bit optimistic, but if we can try and get to 200 subscribers, I would be super appreciative and that would be really awesome news. Please do hit the subscribe button down below. Let's keep growing. And um, yeah, let's get into the video. Awesome, so A-levels, what do you need to take medicine? Well, it's an interesting thing to think about. Obviously there are A-levels that you like, there are obviously A-levels you don't like. I'm gonna be honest, you can't take what you love um, for medicine. Uh, there's probably gonna be a subject in there that you don't like that you're gonna take. I'm not gonna say any names um, in particular, <laughs> chemistry, but just think about it like this, you've got two years of A-levels, um, taking one subject that you don't really like to take a degree which you love um, is probably the better argument in this sense. So what should you take? Well, as I've said already, you need to take biology, obvious. You should really take it. I mean, it's not compulsory, which is quite interesting actually, but you should really take it. If anything, it'll just help you a lot more at university. You know, if you think about it, if you don't take biology at A-level and you go to university to study medicine, somehow you get in. But let's be honest, you're gonna be super confused. You know, you won't have any idea about, you know, what diabetes is. You won't know exactly how the heart works, you know, in detail. And that's gonna set you back quite a lot. So just for your own sake, uh, you should be taking biology and you should genuinely enjoy biology. If you don't enjoy biology and wanna study medicine, that's, sort of weird, you can't really be a doctor and not in your biology. So I would really say that you should be taking biology. So that's number one, um, take biology. Number two, chemistry. Chemistry unfortunately is required. Um, actually chemistry is put more important um, in a lot of universities and colleges than biology for medicine. But um, that's the system and they really want you to take chemistry. Now I get that a lot of you probably don't enjoy chemistry, I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't like it. Despite that, I had to take it and it was manageable. I did it, I got an A star. Um, so obviously, if I, a person who really doesn't like chemistry, can get an A star, you can get an A star on the subject, you can get whatever grade you need to get in but you definitely need to take chemistry. It's a definite subject. And actually they even want you to do well in that subject. Usually the A star that they'll ask you to get is probably gonna come up in chemistry, which is even more annoying. Um, but you guys do have to take chemistry. So that's the next subject I would say. Even more important than biology, if you're not gonna take bio, which is you have to take chemistry. Chemistry is that subject which you cannot get into university without medicine. The reason being for that, I'm not really sure. It could be that, you know, at university you talk a lot about pharmacology medicine, and that's quite a big step up, so you need to learn a lot about chemistry. And to be fair, there's a lot of chemistry that comes into biology, you know, things like membranes in the body, continuous and discontinuous membranes, the blood-brain barrier, a lot of that circulates around hydrogen ions moving in and out, red blood cells, the transport of carbon dioxide. A lot of that, again, is to do with pH, ions, and all of that. So, you know, while it might not be the most enjoyable subject, it is something that you unfortunately have to take. The next subject, however, good news, really up to you. You can take whatever you want um, for the next subject. Now, most people say you have to take maths. That's not true. Most people tend to take maths just because it's really easy. It overlaps with biology and chemistry quite a lot. You know, you've got things like um, equations and statistics that you learn a lot in biology and chemistry. Taking maths is sort of like killing two birds with one stone. It's really easy. And you know, you're gonna probably wanna take maths as well. So if you do enjoy maths, take it, you know, that's great. It's probably the most common one people take, um, but you, there's no need to take maths. Um, before I, you know, spread any sort of incorrect information out there, you don't need to take maths, you know. The first thing I'd say is to check the university that you're applying to, make sure that they don't say they want a particular subject or maybe they like a particular subject and applications, because if so, go for that. But apart from that, you can take whatever you want and you could take, for example, German, you could take economics, you could take theology, um, you can take literally anything you want. Some universities actually like a non-math subject just to show you sort of diversity in your studies that you're able to do different things and you know that could help some universities like maths just because you know it's solid you know it's good and it will help you in medicine when you're studying we actually have to study data and statistics as well so you know it helps you a lot but really it's up to you you can take whatever you want so feel free with that subject to do whatever you want yeah that's really it for the last subject again the final thing i'd say is some people like to take four subjects i would say no because chemistry and biology are really challenging subjects 
You don't want to necessarily put more work on yourself than you need to. No medical university in the country, I, or even on the planet, I think, care about the number of A-levels you take. They care about what grades you take. So if they've got a candidate who's come with A-star, A-star, A-A, and they've got a candidate who's come with three A-stars, they're going to take three A-star candidates. They don't care if you've taken four A-levels, you know. No one cares that you've taken loads of A-levels and, you know, you've got okay grades. They want to see that you can get top grades in the subjects you need to get top grades in. So don't go for four subjects. And some people say, hey, can't I just take further maths as maths? And, you know, that's my sort of four subjects. Again, further maths, do not take it. It is super hard, further maths. I've seen people, you know, at my secondary school take further maths. And the amount of time they spend on further maths, it's really, really difficult. Like, medical applications are like an A-level in themselves. So you cannot afford to waste any more time doing further maths. No one wants you to take further maths, so don't take it. Unless, obviously, you really enjoy maths and it's really easy and, it, you know, you know you can do it. You know, if, in that case, do it. But if you're taking it just to show the university you can take four A-levels, please do not do that. It is a waste of time. They don't care. No one cares. I don't care. You don't care. The world doesn't care that you can take four A-levels. What they want to see is you, you're getting three A-stars in the A-levels that you're taking. That's what I would say in terms of taking more than three A-levels and also taking further maths. So hopefully that's a very useful um, sort of bit of information from me to you guys. Hopefully it helps you guys a little bit more understand about what A-levels to take um, and when to take them and how to take them. And hopefully you guys find it enjoyable. If you did, smash the like button down below. Make sure you hit subscribe. If you've got any questions about A-levels to take, make sure you drop them in the comments as well. And we'll see you in the next video. Subscribe and peace.